Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In previous demonstrations, I have worked through alerts and what you can do with them if you want an email notification when something changes in a document library or a list. If you want a bit more control of that process, I would recommend building a flow or a workflow to handle that same workload, handle that same task. So I'm going to start by showing you how to do a workflow. So I've opened up SharePoint Designer 2013 and I'm connected to this SharePoint online site and I'm going to go into the procedures document library and there I'm going to create a new workflow, which is down here. I'm going to create a new workflow there. Email notify It's the name of the workflow. And then I can describe what's going to happen. Let me know when a new procedure is added. So that's always good with documentation. Then you need to select which kind of workflow that you want. And in most cases, it's obvious to choose the latest and best, maybe SharePoint 2013 workflow. But that might not always be the right choice for you. One thing that you need to remember is that SharePoint 2010 workflow is able to send notifications to people outside of your organization. And that might be a very important demand for you that you need to let a outside council or something like that know when a new procedure is added or the marketing agency or whatever, somebody outside of your Office 365. If you're choosing to do an email with a 2013 workflow, then that will not work. It ha they have to have an account on your Office 365 tenant. But in uh, SharePoint 2010 workflow, you can basically send to anyone. So I'll start by showing you the 2010 workflow since that is a bit more flexible in that sense. Now we are inside the workflow and we can start designing it. The action that we're going to focus on here to notify, send an email notification, is of course an action here. So I'm going to do that every time. I'm going to send an email. And in that email, I have to specify, of course, the usual things. Who's going to get the email? And as you see, I can type in here. It doesn't matter what I do. So I have to go into the address book and type an email address there. So I could type an external email address here. That works just fine. And I can, of course, also add several of them. So I could add uh, Antonio and um, a group, the team site members. Let's uh, do that for now. So the uh, me, Antonio Moreno, and the team site members, they should all be notified as soon as we have a new procedure. Also, of course, we can have a, a CC. There's no option for blank CC here, but a carbon copy works just fine. Subject, you fill that out, new procedure, just typing like that. Or you can create a function that builds that subject line. Or you can do a text editor here that allows you to both type and then add functions into that. And that's usually the most powerful one. You see, I clicked on the three little buttons there that takes you into the text editor. Uh, and of course, usually when you want an email, you want it to say what is the name of the new procedure. So I'm going to add from the current item, the current procedure being added, I'm going to add the name of that file. So I'm scrolling down here, they're in alphabetical order, so it's going to be a well. Could of course have typed the N also. Name, right? And then of course I can continue in the same way. I can type in here information about this new procedure. I can add it was created by, just to have some more information. And then I'll add a new lookup there also and I get the created by here. And when you are selecting a person, then you, you can select several different options, a string, display name, email address, login name. On Office 365, the email address and login name should usually be the same. But in this case, I just want the display name. And of course, you can also do a bit of formatting here. But let's wrap this demo up now by actually testing this. And that's usually what I do with my workflows in general. I try to do one thing and test that that works. And then I move on to the next thing. One thing I am not allowed to forget here is to set up when this workflow should run. And that's here under workflow settings, 
or you can go there also. That takes you to the same workflow settings screen. And I need to set this the start options for this workflow. And of course, I want this workflow to start automatically when an item is created. Make sure you don't click that checkbox too quickly, but of course, usually it takes a bit of time for this page to load. I go back and edit the workflow and we're done. So I'm just going to publish this workflow now. And then I'm going to add a new procedure and see that I actually get that email. Go into my procedures, add a new procedure. I'm going to do that in a PowerPoint presentation format. It's always nice. And let's see a customer success story. Now that's how we handle those. So that's my new procedure. It's been created. It's called presentation PPTX. That wasn't really good. I should have changed that before saving it. But let's see what happens in my mailbox now. I should get that presentation PPTX in my mailbox. So let's go there and see if that happens. Uh, one thing to remember about workflows is that they don't run directly. There is a bit of a delay. There it actually is already. But usually you can count on a few seconds of delay. And there you see that it was sent to me and Antonio Marino. And it was created by... Peter Kalmström, and that was set in bold. So that worked. I have now created a workflow that sends an email notification of new procedures. And as you see, that worked just fine. The workflow actually ran faster than my alert. So that was interesting. My alert came here after, as you saw. All right, but that concludes my demo. Thank you for watching this demonstration.